I hated y'all. I, got, <laughs> I especially hated you because you caught that wheel route. Yeah. And I said, what? The, they can't score. Y'all had 112 yeah. yards of offense yeah. and won the game. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. And the guy that's stopping by for conversation and a drink today is a Heisman Trophy winner, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, College Football Hall of Famer, NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, a four-time Pro Bowler, first-team All-Pro, a Titans Ring of Honor inductee, has his number 27, retired for the Tennessee Titans and the Ohio State Buckeyes, an actor, a producer, entrepreneur, and the head football coach of an HBCU Tennessee State, Eddie George. Man. What's up, bro? Dog. Always it's, honor to be on here, man. It's been a while. It has, How man. How you been? Man, I'm, glad, I'm great, man. Blessed. Can't complain. God is good. Uh, glad to have you on your show to, to try this outstanding. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead yes, and talk. Yes, let's do it. To much success. Yes, sir. Past and future. Amen. Let's do it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, you, that's right oh, up your alley. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's smooth. <laughs> that's smooth. <laughs> so how have you been? Man, I've, I've been good, brother. Just um, chopping wood, trying to get these kids in, in, in check. You know, uh, now I'm coaching at, Ohio, at uh, Tennessee State. Right. Uh, been there for two years, going on my third year. Right. Um, trying to get the right bodies in the building. Uh, that being on the field, uh, anybody that touches football, whether it's academics, uh, nutrition, uh, sports performance, uh, raising money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of our biggest um, deals that we're doing now, I'm trying to get a football operations uh, building built. Okay. Where we have everything there from right. our meeting rooms, training room, weight room, all in one spot. Right. Right now, we're just spread, spread out all, all over the place. place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's been a lot of negativity dealing with HBCUs. We saw the situation with Dion. Coach Prime, he leaves Jackson State, goes to Colorado. Mm -hmm. We see the situation playing out right now with uh, Ed Reed and Bethune Cookman. Yeah. Uh, you, so, how about some positivity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. atmosphere, the ambiance, the, the the pageantry that comes along with being an HBCU. How much did you know about an HBCU before you took the job at Tennessee State, and what did you learn once you get got there? Well, I, I knew about HBCU football okay. growing up. Okay. I mean, I was a big college football fan. Okay. You no, know, knew about Eddie Robinson, Grambling. Right. FAMU, right. Tennessee State, right. Savannah State. Okay. And I went to a Fort Union Military Academy okay. in Virginia okay. where a lot of my teammates went to HBC. Okay, yeah. Hampton. Hampton, uh, Virginia uh, Union. Howard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my cousins right. went to HBC. So I'm, I grew up in the culture. Okay. Um, and living in Nashville, uh, we before we moved from when we moved from Houston to Tennessee, we uh, actually practiced at Tennessee State. Okay. Uh, the first couple of years, we okay. lived in the dorms. Right. So I was very familiar okay. with Tennessee right. State okay. then. Um, and over the years, I had friends that went to Tennessee State. Um, I've had various projects at Tennessee State, so okay. I knew of everything about the university: mm -hmm. struggles, um, the, the the great history they had with football. Uh, some of the great alumni that right. come through there with Oprah Winfrey, the right. name, uh, to mention just one person. 34 uh, members in the Pro Football Hall of Fame come from HBCUs. Yes, indeed. So it's 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 a very strong brand when it comes to that. Right. So I, I, I knew of both the positives and the negatives mm -hmm. uh, walking into that situation. Did you always want to coach? Because I, no. I, I mean, I played against you. Yeah, I know you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 I did. I didn't see the the yeah. coaching bug biting you. When did you get the coaching bug, and what made you say, you know what? After all the things that you've done, I mean, you're on Broadway. We're going to discuss that a little mm -hmm. later. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my hat into the coaching ring. You know what, man? Uh, it, it fell in my lap. Okay. And here's how it is. You know, I, like I said, I was, I was happy. You know, pl playing golf, right. you know, working, on, working on my nine iron. I, w I was enjoying that. I was watching my sons grow up. My son actually go goes to uh, film school out here at USC. Okay. Uh, my youngest is a high school football. I was enjoying being a dad. My wealth management, my wealth management business is booming. So right. I'm uh, uh, meeting clients and building that business up. And ironically, President Glover, who is 
the president of Tennessee State is also the president of the AKA Foundation. Okay. Who I do business with, right. on the wealth management side. Mm -hmm. So it was right around COVID in 2020, and uh, everything shut down. Right. And I'm not acting. You know, I'm at home. Right. You know, just just figuring out, okay, what's what's life going to be like when right. we get out? When, when if we get if. out of this, right? So she um, calls me one day out of the clear blue. Says, hey, or texts me. She says, hey, uh, I need to talk to you about something very important. So immediately I'm looking at, okay, let me look at the accounts. Right, right. To make sure all every dollar sure accounted for. The money ain't jump for Right, <laughs> exactly. I don't want to pull anything out. Right. I'm like, okay, let's see. Right. Look at the accounts, everything fine. In fact, it's growing, growing. because okay. during the COVID, everything good. was rocking. Right. So, oh, good. She probably wants to add more money. So right. I'm like, all right, beautiful. Give her a call. You say, hey, President Glover, how you doing? How's everything? What's going on? <laughs> Just good. It's just, uh, it's account's good. I see it's growing. I said, you're thinking about adding more to it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, there's no, no, not quite. I just want to, I just want you to have an open mind about this. Uh oh. Right? oh wait, wait, wait. I said, okay, you're calling me. She probably wants me to do some fundraising right. for the university. Okay, okay, that's not my next thing. Well, ask me for a, you donation. Know, a donation. So I um I said, okay, well, shoot it. What you got? She says, well, I'm, um, I'm thinking about making a change, and I want you to consider being the next head coach for Tennessee State. And it was a long pause <laughs> like that. <laughs> and automatically, I'm like offended. I'm like, woman, don't you? I'm a financial advisor. I'm <laughs> right, not trying to right. raise money. You don't ask me to be a head coach. Right. And this is off the heels of what Dion has done. Right. right? So I said, before I give a hard no, I want to keep the business relationship yeah. open. I'm going to. You know, let uh, me think about let it. Let me think about it. Let me pray on it, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me let me pray on okay. it for 48 hours now. No, now now I get back figure to it out. So I got I get off the phone, didn't give it a uh, second thought, and uh talked to my wife. I said, okay. I said, listen to this. This ridiculous ass idea. Glenda Glover called me wanting me to be the next head coach for Tennessee State, knowing I'd never had a coaching experience. experience. Right. She says, well, why not? Baby, she sees something in you you don't see in yourself. I said, well, I'm doing all the stuff. I've been acting. I've been trying to do this. I'm right. doing, building my business. I don't have time. To, I can help her find one. But I'm and see, they just probably want me to be, you know, the next flash in the news. Right. I, I had no interest in that. Right. She says, well, at least look into it. So as an exercise, I said, all right, if I'm going to start a program, how would I do it? Right. And that's when everything started rushing. Right. I said, okay, man, I can implement a financial literacy course, right. education. Right. This is what I do. I bring in this coach to do this and the strength conditioning program, nutrition, and right. all, all these ideas is going, is keeping me up at night. And I said, oh no. You got power five ideas. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. Power five ideas, the HBCU buddy. But that's what it came down to. Right. So, long story short, I put some things out there, you know, um, that said, well, if I do this, this is what I'm going to need. My budget has to look like this. Right. You must make a commitment to these key areas. Right. Um, what are your plans to build out facilities? Right. Cost of attendance. Um, addressing all the things that we're currently talking about now. Right. What is your plan? Because if you think I'm going to come in here just you know, uh, as a, a, flat, a bleep on the radar right. or a, 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 a day, you know, just something that's going to be a flash in the pan, have zero interest in that. Right. But if you want to do something elite. Long term. Long term, I'm good because I am putting some stuff on the side for myself. I don't need to do this. Right. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sacrificing some things I want to accomplish right. because I want to pour back into the game that gave me so much. Right. And pour into these kids and give right. them something. And, and prime. What he did at Jackson State right. was inspirational. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? And I talked to him about it. He right. says, man, you can absolutely do it. Right. And that gave me the vote of confidence. And once I committed to that idea of being a coach, it just took on from there. Has it been more difficult than you had oh, previously? Oh, oh, stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been? Yes, yes. But anything worthwhile is uphill. Right. But what you do right. is, is uphill. Right. I see... I've seen the battles yes. that you yes. <laughs> that you yes. going through yes. Yes. upstairs right. and on the court, all right. that. I mean, right. all that comes with it. Right. But you know, it's it's it gives me the the tenacity that I have to see it succeed. The vision that I have for this program outweighs all of that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are days when I'm, I'm driving home, like man, 
you know what? Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Right. You know what I'm saying? Things don't move as fast as we would like at right. HBCUs. There are antiquated uh, policies and operations that you got to work through. It's, right. it's an old way of thinking. So you've got to, I, I choose to approach it completely different than, than you know, blasting it out there. I, I, had, I like to influence people to get, ultimately would move us in the right direction. Correct. That's progress. Okay. That's to move it to an elite status. So that's that's kind of the approach that I've taken. When you look at it, obviously when a coach comes in, there's a lot of players that's already implemented and they say, well, I'm going to need like two to three years to get the players that I want, oh, yeah. that I need, that understand my ideology. Yes, I'm going to work with some of the current players, obviously knowing that I'm going to run some of, some of them jokers off. Yeah. But give me a little while to get the players yeah. that I want now you're heading into your third year. Mm -hmm. Have you turned that corner yet? Are you starting to get some of the players that you want that can implement your system? Absolutely. I mean, you get kids that fall off because of graduation. Some kids are not going to make it because they're ineligible. Some kids can't pass the drug test. Right. Some kids don't want that structured environment. Okay. You know what I'm saying? There's right. some non-negotiables that I'm just not going to waver on. Right. You know, there's a, you play the game at a very high level. Yeah. You're very disciplined. You've been under some great coaches throughout your entire – you know – what that looks like. Yes. For inside and out. And so, and so do I. So right. I'm not going to change or compromise how I was raised in this game because I'm cut from a different claw. Right. But I'm also going to have a, an ear of understanding and listen to these kids. Right. But some of it has got to go. So to your point, yes, we came in, had to implement a strength and conditioning program, number one, better nutrition. We seen some bodies change, but the mindset didn't change. Right. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Body change, but the mindset yeah. still have to work on that. So I'm getting in those kids, whether it be from JUCO or from the portal in high school, mm -hmm. to come in and I have to mold them into what I want them to be. Right. Yeah. I read where you talked to Coach Tomlin about how the best way about to go about this job. What was some of the advice that Coach Tomlin gave you? He said um, that, first of all, be yourself. Okay. Don't try to emulate you know, somebody else, like the Belichicks or Saban, you know, those are, those, they're who they're very successful men. Be who you are, come from your strengths. And my strengths right now, I'm not gonna call, draw up ISO. Right. You know, I'm there to inspire, I'm there to bring in resources. Right. So coming from that perspective. And that I could, you know, absolutely be the CEO of the football team. Right. That's what I am right now. You know, I'm there to bring in the right people, the right resources. I know, I know what a good run play looks like. Right. I know what uh, kind of defense I want to install. I know the mentality that I want to have. And I delegate that, the X's and O's, to my offensive coordinator and my defensive coordinator and my special teams coach. And I let them do their thing. Right. And the moment that, that I see issues within that, that they're not doing their job, that, sh that will be addressed. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. The most important thing to me, the, the biggest hire that I made, Shannon, was having a chief of staff. Okay. Someone that came from the world of academics and academia and building a program okay. already. Right. A young man that went to Georgia State, uh, helped build that program up. And um, he came along board. He was out at New Mexico. So he understood the language, the pitfalls, the everything. He, he was my guiding light. Okay. And he was the buffer, the buffer between myself and some of the administration. Mm -hmm. So it was never any friction there. So that was very important for me to have on my staff. So to answer your question, we are turning the corner in the right direction. And I think, I think we're, you know, hopefully we can have our first uh, winning season. Are resources the biggest hurdle that you feel you've got to overcome or HBCUs need to overcome? It's that, you know what, brother, it is so much deeper. It's more than that. It's, it's very deep because it's systemic. Okay. It comes down to um, something that's been in place for 100, for 50, 75, 100 years, and you're trying to change it, and it's not going to be able. You're not going to be able to change it. A football coach is not going to be able to change it. This goes into politics, all right? Um, Tennessee State just got awarded $250 million of land grant money that was owed to them over the last five decades. Wow. It should have been $500 million. Right. So they just get the money, but here's the catch. It has to go, it, they said it has to go toward existing buildings. The 250 million, uh, buildings that must be demolished. No, 
that should happen. They should be. We should be able to dictate where, well, that where money the money goes. goes. How you gonna tell me? That's like Fox, oh, Shanna, we we gonna pay your salary, but we gonna tell you, you need to spend it on clothes. You need right. to spend it on clothes. Yeah, Who does that? Face. They don't tell that the University of Tennessee. No, in the other school. Right. But why Tennessee State? Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, why can't they say, hey, here's our money. Here's the money. A third can go into an endowment. A third right. can go to an annual fund. Right. Another third can go to a uh, new new facility. Right. But no, that and that's the problem to me because it don't so they allow. Still control, not, they still try to control exactly even from a distance. Even from a distance. So that's that's the stuff that I'm seeing and it, what stops us from truly growing and truly being elite. Right. You know what I'm saying? And on the flip side of that, we've got to take those funds and manage it appropriately. Be good stewards of that money yeah. and have systems that are transparent to show, hey, it went to X, Y, and Z. Right. Here is the return on your investment. Right. Whatever capacity that is. I hear critics say Celebrity head coaches, because they look at you, Coach Prime, as former NFL players. Uh, Eddie Robb, you played with Eddie Robb at at Alabama State. And they say, well, the problem is, is that they don't understand Mm -hmm. the the inner workings of an HBCU. They went to Power Fives. There are these big names. Mm -hmm. And so they don't really understand what it's like to be at an HBCU. And you say, but I do because I've had so many family members, and I do understand I understand it's going to take a long time, but I'm willing to pull up, roll up my sleeves, right. and get dirty, and help steer this thing in the right direction. Right. I don't understand it. I don't. And that's why I choose not to go in making declarations on what needs to be done right. so I can understand, to listen. Okay. Okay. And then come up with a compromise of how we move this in the right direction. Right. You know, what are those issues? How have things been done before? Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I choose to be to to listen and then to be understood. Right. In that in that regard. So, uh, yes, th- things are are different um, at HBCUs. Um, the value system is different. Mm-hmm. Um, everything about the experience is different from a Power Five uh, institution. Right. Let's just be real with it. Um, some some things are great, but some things need to be updated. Right and polished off and moved in the right direction. Because that's, that's, you know, Tennessee State has their own issues. Right. But then there are other HBCUs that are doing things right. Right. You look at FAMU's facilities. Yes. They're great. Um, Prairie View's, they, Prairie, I Prairie View, Prairie View oh, great oh, The best in FCS. Really? Oh, yes. Wow. You look at their weight room, you look at their, um, their locker room, their facilities are top notch. Alabama State, same thing. So. There are some HBCUs that are, are, that are, that are up they, there doing things right. So each institution is have different. a different from, set of issues. A different set of these issues, correctly. Right. When you heard, and like I said, you played with uh, uh, Eddie Robinson Jr. You know Eddie Robb very well. I used to work out with him. When he said Prime, what, for whatever reason, they had some issues. Yeah. You know, Prime said some things. Maybe Eddie Robb said some things. They met at uh, midfield to shake hands, and, you know, they brushed each other off. When you hear Coach Robb says, Prime, Coach Prime isn't swack. What was your immediate thought? And then did you get on the phone and say, Rob, we can't, come on, Rob. Hey, man, you know what? I, I laughed. <laughs> you know, I thought, I mean, to me, that that's it's kind of entertaining. You know, right. I think it's, you know, coaches have that. They're competitive. Right. You know what I'm saying? Dion wound up winning the game. He didn't appreciate right. the things that happened in the game. Right. Wop, wop, wop. Um, you know, and when Dion did, he flipped it. You know, he turned it into a song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was viral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Who ain't sweat, right. baby? I mean, that was <laughs> yeah. that was genius. But, you know, I think I talked to Eddie about it. Right. And he, he understood, you know, it was the heat of the moment. Right. And um, he wanted to let him know where he stood right. in terms of, hey, you know, you're not going to come in here and disrespect me, disrespect the the the, the conference and, 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 and so forth. So, you know, I, I look at that as being the competitor. Right. right. Much, much like, you know, how we get down between right. the white lines and right. how we, when Baltimore came to Tennessee, <laughs> it, it was no you love know, lost. Not, if you died not. that day, congratulations. <laughs> exactly. You both have died. Yeah, exactly. You did what you had to do. So that's that's how I look at that. Right. Yeah. When I look at the situation with um, um, the sponsorship, because it was a genius what Coach, what Coach Prime was able to oh, do. yeah. He took some of his partners yes. and he, he leveraged them. Yes. The Walmart, 
the American Airlines. Um, he has a great relationship with Michael Strahan, and he was able to get. Mm -hmm. So these guys look like they're well together. They didn't look like an all-tournament team. Some mm -hmm. guys in jeans, some guys in slacks, some guys in hoodies. Uh, you know, Beats came in and did a deal, the NIL deal with his son, and they were able to get headphones. Mm -hmm. Are, is that something that you're trying to do? Some of your partnerships, you're trying to leverage and say, oh, hey, guys, look, this is what I need. Can you help me do this? And can you help me do that? Absolutely. He provided a blueprint of success. And I'm going to take that same blueprint of success mm -hmm. and put my thumbprint on it. Okay. And leverage that into hopefully what we can get at Tennessee State. Right. You know, um, he, again, Dion or Coach Prime went into uh, Jackson State with a plan. Right. A to Z. The moment right. he stepped in the door, he knew exactly what he was getting himself, himself into. He had everything lined up, you know, reality show. He had the sponsorships. He right. was going to turn it into a phenomenon, which right. he did. And he put a hell of a product on the field. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And that, to me, was everything. So, yes, my, my plan is to, in fact, the next couple of weeks, meet with uh, some corporations in Nashville, right? Which is a I heard Nashville is booming. Oh God, you got to come. I got you. Got you. Got to come. You gotta yeah, come yeah. You know you. Got you. Got to come. You know, my boy, my best friend yeah. died on your coach's yeah, staff. Yeah, He's burning the special yes. teams coordinator. But but um, Nashville, they have uh, some Fortune 500 companies that would love to partner with us, and that is my plan to see how they can lend their resources, help us, you know, get us to a level where we're elite, and I think it's possible. I know you're playing Notre Dame in the opener. Mm -hmm. First time Notre Dame has played in HBCU. Coach Prime, I listened to him talk. He said, look, guys, we got to start. If we're going to take a money game, make sure it's a money game. Yes. Don't take $400,000. That's right. And then you can use your $400,000 to travel. If right. they give you $400,000, make them pay for travel. Exactly. Make them also bring the band to travel. And That's make right. sure they play for the whole room and board, for, every, for excuse me, for hotel rooms and food for everybody that's traveling. Right. Because if you just use your $400,000 that they paid you, and you got to play for travel, and you got to pay for hotel, right. you ain't got no money. You come out on the back end. Yes. That's the zero. You, and, you, you, and, that, you may owe some. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you in the red. Right. Yes. Right, so you just said Notre Dame, right? Yes. So yeah, <laughs> we're we're good on that. Okay, okay. Yeah, and and that was and that was negotiated as such. I think it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for our brand to be um, to have more recognition to be right. seen in that regard. Right. Yes. NBC, the only game on NBC. Right. First time, like you mentioned, in uh, at Notre Dame. Yes. Uh, two historic programs, um, and it gives us a chance to show who we are right. as a program. I mean, like you said. You know, 34 Hall of Famers are from HBCU. Yes. Three or four are from Tennessee State. Correct. So Richard yeah. Dent, Claude Humphrey, Humphrey the name yep. of the, uh, to, to name a few. So um, and it allows us, us to show where we are going as an institution and as a football team and as a program. So, you know, that's a wonderful opportunity to go compete at a very high level, to prepare and to show off, you know, what we, who we are and what we're about to do. I don't know if you have, but I know one of your goals, I don't know if it's already happened, is to move from SCS to FBS. Has that happened, or is that what you want? No, no. We, we've looked at various scenarios um, of what that looks like, what needs to happen, and that's a much bigger play for, for the Because everybody, it's not just the football team goes FBS. Yes, everybody, everybody has to go. Golf, baseball, and, we, there, and there are some sports that we don't have yet to be FBS eligible. Right. So we got to institute the baseball, you got to get maybe, uh, you know, our AD, uh, Mickey Allen, phenomenal guy, big thinker. Um, he's thinking about bringing hockey to HBCU, you know, wow. because they're in con we have uh, the Predators in town, so they've right. had conversations wow. about that happening. So there's some creative ideas being floated around in terms of HBCUs and us going to the FBS level. We are sitting on, you know, some major bones at Tennessee State, not to mention you know, 900 acres of undeveloped land. Wow. And that's the last real big parcels in Tennessee in right. terms of development. And right. that's where the growth is going. So there's some opportunities there for sure. You mentioned that you had no idea, you had no interest in coaching, and then it kind of fell into your lap. Did you come out with it? Did you say, well, I want to stay two years, I want to stay four years, I want to stay five years. Is there a plan, is there a timeline in how long you want to stay or want to, or what you want to accomplish while you're there? Well, it, the, 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 the decision was easy for me because I didn't have to uproot my family mm -hmm. and leave somewhere else. It's literally in my backyard. Right. I'm 15 minutes away already from Tennessee State from right. where I live. My son's high school is around the corner. So 
my thing was, hey, you know, I have a five-year contract. Right. My goal is I'm 10 toes down. I'm going to be present where I am right now and get this program in a direction where I need it to go and leave it better than when I got it. Okay. There will come a time when I won't be the head coach. Right. I mean, that's that's yeah. obvious. Right. When that is, I, I'm not sure. I don't, and I don't know what that looks like for me. I don't know if, you know, a power five school is the next move for me. I don't know if uh, the NFL is the next move right. for me. Um, do you want to coach at the next? Do you want to coach? Oh, at the absolutely! Next level? I would love that. So the coaching yeah, bug yeah. is bitten you now. You, 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 oh, you, I'm, you are... I'm, I'm knee deep in it. I, when, I, when I go in something, I'm all in. I mean, I commit to that thing, okay. and I'm, I'm all in. So, it, yes, you know, I would, I would look at opportunities outside of that, right? Because I, I understand, right. you know, what Prime was talking about, right? And, and for him to um, give everything he had to that university. And to then get the criticism that came along. But, but this, yeah, of course. They tried to guilt him into staying, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's done, he, I mean, two, two uh, undefeated seasons. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's never been done in the school's history. Right. But he has to think about the miles and the lives of his coaching staff because he gave them, they gave him his life. They, his staff gave them the, his, their lives for two years being underpaid. Right. And on favors. So it's time for them to cash in on, right. uh, on their opportunities as well. And I, I think it's awesome that he can take his son, develop him right. at Jackson State, and now take him up to a Power 5 school and say, okay, that Heisman Trophy is now real. Right. That national championship is now real. This platform is now real. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you have to respect that. Right. You have to respect it. How did you go about putting your staff together? I remember Hugh Jackson was on your staff who has mm-hmm. tons of NFL experience, uh, got the job at Grambling. Uh, as I mentioned, my, uh, one of my best friends, Keith Burns, on your staff, played yeah, a number yeah, of years in the NFL, yeah, has been yeah. a special teams coach at Washington. How did you go about putting your staff together? Because a lot of times you're putting people on your staff, you don't really have a, a whole lot of uh, uh, working relationship with them guys. Yes. And you don't really know these guys. I didn't know a single soul outside of uh, Joe Bowden, who I played with, right. uh, Brandon Fisher, who... I was on the sidelines when I was playing. I relied heavily on Jeff Fisher's to guidance with right. that. Um, I didn't have a, a Rolodex of coaches that right. said, hey, come, come roll with me. You know, I was just thinking, okay, who can I call on to right. help me construct this together? So Jeff Fisher, my first year, was on my staff as a senior advisor, and he was the architect to help me piece together who was doing what. Mm-hmm. And so I'll get my sea legs underneath me in terms of that. Um, he did a masterful job, you know, and, and turn, in terms of the great coaches that are out there. Interviewed right. quite a few guys. Hugh came up with some NFL experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Burns, who was uh, probably, you know, the gift in the building. I, I would never tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dude. Yeah. Because he brings so much joy to it. He he, he is, makes it fun to come to work. He makes it fun to come to work. Yeah. And he loves what he does. Yes. He's not there for a paycheck. No. Yeah, you can see that. And I, and I appreciate it about him. Right. And he's a... He, he got your back, he got your back. Yes, he, he, absolutely, yeah, he, 1,000. He, he's a dog through and through. 1,000. You know? um, Joe Bowden, again, linebacker coach, uh, played with me um, um, with the Titans. Brandon Fisher, I mentioned. Um, on the offensive side of the football was Keenan Smith, who was our wide receivers coach, um, who's now going on to other opportunities. Um, uh, Corey Harkey, who uh, got with the Buffalo Bills last year, who was not going to get a ring, but... Um, led them to a, a great season last year. So I relied heavily on Jeff's guidance with that. And now the second and third go around the iteration of coaches, I've kind of taken control of that to see, you know, who can fit in, who can find a piece to the puzzle. You know, it's got to right. be the certain type of guy that can come in right. and coach these kids, but also mesh with the chemistry of the coaching right. staff. Obviously, if the game is a lot different because you're not just relying on high school guys. Now that transfer portal, and a lot of teams are getting guys out of the transfer portal. They're doing more of the transfer portal than they are recruiting no question. high school kids. How, how, how have you been able to navigate that? It's a, it, it, it changes minute to minute, moment to moment. Um, two years ago, it was, hey, we're going to go 40, 40, you know, um, 20 in terms of our uh, – our, our ratio breakdown. breakdown portal juco high school mm-hmm. all right and you know we're going to identify these body types well the kids that we've gone after in juco are going up to fbs you know i'm like whoa you know kids are getting offers from austin p and 
you know, us and, you know, a fam you are going to Florida State and Ohio State. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay, so we got to find, we got to be very creative in how we do it now. So now, because of the portal, it's literally free agency. Yes. You're seeing somebody go from Alabama, which is crazy to me, right. to Oklahoma. Right. Like, well, what are you looking for? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, this whole NIL thing is, is still uh, perplexing to me. Right. But from our perspective, um, we're having to go more on younger in terms of high school and development because there's a plenty of high school kids that are out there that are not getting recruited. A lot of quote unquote four star, three star kids that are being overlooked. And what's happened for us, uh, we've developed like three defensive linemen that we inherited and they're at FBS programs. Wow. One went to West Virginia, another one went to UAB, another one went to uh, Akron. Okay. So. It tells me, oh, we're doing the right we're doing, things. Right. We're doing the right things. We're developing these kids. Now we just got to figure out a way. Develop and keep develop, them. Develop and keep them, but use it, you know, to your advantage. Say, hey, you come here. Let me get you, let me get your program for two years. Give right. me two years. Let me develop you. Get you ready for the next level of whatever that is. Right. FBS or even the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it, it, it's encouraging to see what we're doing and doing it right. But we, we always have to shift with the current trend and right. recruiting and constantly finding what that is. That's the number one name and uh, thing in the game right now is, is, is recruiting. All right, I'm a five star <clears throat> and you got to come into my grandmother's house and you got to sell my grand, oh, you got to sell me. What, what's your pitch? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, let's get a sip of this. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go, let's, let's, let's do that first of all, five star. Before I get in my pitch, first of all, I want to know what it is you want to accomplish. Ideally, I want to graduate, mm -hmm. and then I got to go to the next level because you see the house you're sitting in. In four years, my grandma's not going to be sitting. Here. Absolutely, and that's and that's my number one goal. So, mm -hmm. how how soon, how well can you develop me academically, football wise, make me a better man, and get me to the next level? Well, um, well first of all, you know Tennessee State has a great is a great institution in terms of academics. I mean. You look at some of the great minds and great people that have come through there. Um, I have a, a great business school. I don't know what your interest is. Mm -hmm. I assume it's business. criminal. I was a criminal justice criminal major. Criminal so I want to be a criminal. I want to be a lawyer. Criminal, criminal justice major. We we can we can get definitely. Uh, get can you, you get Oprah send me a gift basket? <laughs> if Oprah send me a gift basket, I'm coming. I can I can see what I can do. I think I can get Oprah to get you a gift basket and a book. All right. I know you love to read. I'm I'm coming I to Tennessee you, State then. <laughs> but uh, overall, man, I, I would, you know, I, I'm not one to sell or pitch. I, I really, I really had like to try to engage myself in a conversation with a right. young man and find out what's important to him. Because if that's what you want, I can develop you. I how, know what that looks like. How much is a conversation with the young man as opposed to selling mom or grandma? It's reading the room. Okay. Finding out, finding out who the decision maker is. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because the young man is going to be influenced by somebody. So if it's mom, I was like, okay, you want to see your baby, right? Right. <laughs> so you want to go down to Jackson State and take a bus and a plane, or you want to come directly to the international airport in Nashville, Tennessee, right. 15 minutes from campus and come see him play. Right. You know what I'm saying? So location, the ability to see your child play, and knowing that our staff, when you come to Tennessee State, it is what it is. Our staff really sells it. Right. You know, when you got guys like you said, Burns and Joe Bowden and Brandon and and, and Theron H down the hall, who's our offensive coordinator, you feel the love. You feel the family. You know, you right. know you're going to get hard, coached hard. Right. But it's going to come from a place of love. How different, Eddie, because when you and I played, we didn't have some of the pitfalls that these young guys have now, which is social media. How difficult is it to coach in the social media age? where clicks and likes and going viral are more important than becoming a great young man, being a great football player. Hey man, you see it all the time, man. Everything's about the instant gratification. Okay. It's about clicks and likes and how many followers do I have? And it's, it's very difficult because kids are now looking at hell, you know, you got Louis bags at the at, <laughs> at your facility. Right. What you want with a you're not getting that. You know, <laughs> that's mine. You know, I, I earned that. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's very difficult now to navigate through that. Um, but I, I know personally I have to do a better job 
to to figure that out to, mm -hmm. to attract some of these kids to some degree. But you know, I'm not I'm not about that. I'm not about the the, the flash. I'm about action. You know, mm -hmm. I'm about I'm about the work. You know, I'm about you know getting my hands dirty and and, and, and hitting that iron. You know, iron sharpens iron. Right. About the results. You know, I'm not into selling fluff. You right. Know? So, uh, but there is a, a a balance that I must strike in terms of attracting a kid to come see what, who we are and what we do and to get him in the door to stay. Have you thought Have you thought about becoming more active on social media? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I think about it all the time. I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure out ways to uh, put our message out there, to put my platforms out there uh, in a very authentic way. Right. That's not um, forced, that's not, um, you know, uh, scripted. It, it has to be very organic for me. And, and, and I'm not gonna strike until it's right. right. You know, I'm not, not gonna, continue to do something that's just to, uh, just to do it and it comes off as fake. Right. It's not, not who I am. Right. But it has, to, it, has to be, it has to be real for me. I'm looking at you like your son, you're coaching your son. Uh, you have one of your sons at USC and you mentioned in film school and now you're coaching your son. Are you coach when you're coaching? Are you coach or are you dad? Oh, I'm coach when I'm coaching. Okay. He knows that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard and, 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 and but fair. You right. know what I'm saying? And I, I coach my kids, my, my team anyway, like they're my sons. Right. So it's not going to be anything different. And, you know, I'm, I'll be dad and drive home. But when he was getting recruited, I, I think it came down It came down to two other schools. I was Navy and, and, um, and Furman. And I thought he was going to go to Furman. Right. I wasn't going to coach him more. I said, this is your life. This is your decision. You know what I'm about. You've seen us grow from year one to year yeah. two. You, You've been around it, you've been on the sidelines and so forth. Um, but he said, Dad, you know, I want to come play for you. I said, well, why? He said, well, one, number one, I want to help you build this. Right, wow. And um, I believe in what you're doing. And, you know, if I want to if I want to go to grad school, get my master's in business, I'm going to do that. And if things that work out in the football, I want to get into communications, I want to talk about football. You know, talk about the game. So he has a plan. Right. As a high school senior. Right. There's some kids that don't even think that way that's that's 22, 24 years old. Right. You know, still chase, chasing the, the 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 football dream. So I said, okay, let's let's do it. And, right. and now it's, you know, it's now with skin, real skin in the game, yeah. if he's coming there, it's, it's got to be right. Right. I, I got I got to see it through. Do you ever worry about him going home and say, uh, mom, dad, dad, dad tripping? Dad was tripping at practice today. I don't know what dad was on. Nah, that, that happens already. <laughs> I'll be at his wrestling matches already. <laughs> Lean on him, me. Lean on him. You know, yeah, I'm right. at his wrestling matches. I'm already doing that in the stands already. So, right. you know, I, I don't worry about that. Right. Nor I worry about my wife more than anything else. Right. You know, she's she's the she's the she's the tough one. Right. Him. Yeah. Looking at your upbringing, you were born in Philly. Um, you grew up. Yeah, were you an Eagles fan? Oh, grew up bleeding Eagle Green. Uh, Ron Jaworski, yeah. uh, Steve Spagnolia. Grew up hating Dallas, yeah. hating the Giants in Washington. Harold Carmichael. Um, Harold Carmichael. Yes, I used, I used to sell hot chocolate at the stadium. Oh, really? Yes, yes. It was uh, Eagle Philadelphia. It was Eagles playing Washington Redskins, and I was I didn't make no money that day. I was a big football fan. I only took the job so I can watch the games. But they had, remember when Ghostbusters was out? Yeah, we had yeah. these packs on our back of hot chocolate, and we had cups on right, each side. Right. So I was up in the upper decks, and I'm selling hot chocolate, and a play's going on, and I'm looking, and I go to pull it, and I'm pulling out the hot chocolate, I'm shaking, shaking it, and it wasn't coming out. So finally I shot it out, and hot chocolate splattered everywhere, right? And it was on this woman's white mint coat. Oh, man, yeah, you got to go there. You got to go She didn't notice it. Everybody looked at me. I looked at them. I took my stuff and ran down the steps. I said, I can't, I can't afford to pay for that joint. But, um, yeah, I grew up a big Philadelphia fan. I love I loved my Sixers. Like, right. you love the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, love the Flyers. Love everything about Philly sports right, right now. Yeah. High school football, um, you, I remember you said that I think your sophomore year, your mom sent you to military school. My, yeah, going into my junior year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What What was that like, and why Why did she do that? Were you hard headed? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had a one point three GPA in high school. 
So you couldn't thought, get in prison with that grade. Th- couldn't get in prison. <laughs> thought I was gonna go to thought I was gonna play pay uh, a, a running back at Penn State. Okay. And you know, I was kidding myself. I was in La La Land. Right. Um, and my mother could see where uh, my life was headed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And she said, okay, um, I can make this move now, get him out of Philadelphia, right. get him in, a, in an environment where he can begin to thrive and to begin to see his potential. Whether you or the crowd you were hanging with. Oh, it was, it was, it was, I was a product of my environment. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a lot of um, drug use, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, um, depression, um, the kids, you know, Drinking, smoking, you know, stealing. Yeah. And I wasn't that type of kid. I've never, I don't like to get high. I, right. I, I, I'll drink every now and again. Right. But, you know, I was being influenced in other ways. Yeah. And 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 she said I had to, had to get out of there. So right. at the age of 15, she sent me down to Fort Union Military Academy. Wow. In the middle of, no, literally, like Charlottesville is 30 minutes east or west. Richmond is about another 90 miles uh, uh, east. Mm-hmm. And smack dab in the middle is Fork Union Military Academy. And when you talk about culture shock, man, it was tough. I, I didn't, I did not um, uh, adhere to any of the rules when I first got down there. You had every second of the, every second of the day was accounted for. Yeah. You was doing something, chores, studying, working out, doing something. And I thought, you know, this was, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a freelance Willie, you know, yeah. doing whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> right. But I had to learn real quick that, yes, I have to do my chores. I got to sweep the, the hallways. I got to wax it. I got to buff it. I had to clean the bathrooms. I got to do all that stuff. And once I committed to the process of that, that's when things began to flourish. So I went there, man. I went to Fork Union and... You talk about some dudes. I, I believe it was about 18 guys that got Division One scholarships out of Fort Union. Wow. Dogs went to North Carolina, uh, Clemson, Florida State, Savannah State, Virginia Union, Youngstown State, all over the country. Right. Some dudes, and I had to. I went down to six feet, 178 pounds, and I had to get bigger, right. stronger, and faster. Right. And that's and that's what I did. How big were you? A mil- were you? Were you? Were anybody in your family military? So my did you father. Go- my father was was he served uh, in the army. My okay. uncle, his his brother served in Vietnam. My grandfather served in the military as well. So you had some idea. You had a general knowledge of what military structure was like. But, but <laughs> hey, I had no parts of that. <laughs> Where you had to do military, you know, right. Hospital corners every day, two space fingers with your with yeah. your locker. With everything hangers. is at time. Everything's if they good. say six thirty, hey, don't you cover that thing at six thirty and oh five? No, no, everything is is a regimen, and so I did that for two and a half, three years, and my and I'll never forget it, man. After my um, true senior year, um, I rushed for like thirteen hundred yards. Right. I was all prep, but my grades, you know, I had to really work on my grades. Right. I didn't have, uh, I had zero scholarship offers. I had a partial offer to Edinburgh. Right. And this was going on my senior year. Right. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do? You know, so luckily they have a postgraduate program. Right. You can go back for what, a second another year, year yeah. another year. And I developed and I worked on my, my grades. And, and that's where I got really into reading. Right. You know, Faking Real Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay. You know, I was reading that every day. And, um, and just having a positive mindset and just believing because I didn't have a, a, a place to go to at all. So right. I went back hoping that I could come back and, and garner some attention from some major schools. And I did just that, man. So it was um, it was a blessing in disguise that my mother, cause she didn't have much money. Right. And I always wondered how did she pay for it? Right. And it wasn't until 1996 when I uh, got drafted that she drove back down to Fork Union Military Academy and gave them that final check for my installment to pay off my entire school. Wow. Yeah, she sacrificed. She worked seven, six, seven jobs, man, as a model, flight attendant, uh, waitress, you know, God knows what else. It was just me and my sister, and she worked her ass off to put me through there, and it was, it was definitely life-changing for me. So you get, you're getting offers. Where was Ohio? I mean, was Ohio State the only? Obviously, it wasn't the only offer. But did once they offered, did you know you were going to Ohio nah, State, I or went, did you? 
I wanted to go to Penn State. I grew okay. up a Penn State fan. Right. My father, you know, he was he he was a big football fanatic, loved running backs. And I wanted he was on drugs at the time. Right. And I wanted him to um get clean. I felt like if he saw me thriving, being successful, he would come to my games, it would give him the incentive to get clean, right. have a clean life, and we right. have a relationship. So my goal was to go to Penn State and be a running back. Yeah, because they had some great with Franco Harris, Lydell Mitchell, DJ Dozier. Going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kajana Carter, Kajana, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they had some yeah. dudes. <laughs> and I wanted to wear that black and white, right. you know, that blue and white, so black shoes. And um, so I'm getting recruited at that time. You know, I got Louisville, BYU, um, Nebraska came on the scene. And uh, one other school, Virginia, okay. UVA. And I was really thinking leaning toward Virginia, but there was a guy that was that went to Ohio State who was at Fort Union, who was my platoon char- sergeant a year ago. He was um, a trainer right. that taped ankles, right. and he would call me from time to time. And I hated him because he drove me crazy. <laughs> I'm like Danny, what, Danny Osmond. He said right. Dan, Danny kept calling me. He's finding out, you know, how are you doing, and you know, and, and, and uh, playing uh, in my high school years and. He was like, uh, you're having a great season. What do you think about coming to Ohio State? And I was like, oh, man, that would be great. You know, they got Robert Smith, right. Raymond Harris, Butler, but they got some yeah. dudes too. Yeah. All I wanted was opportunity. So he says, well, I'm going to go talk to the uh, head national recruiting coordinator and let him know about you. A trainer. Right. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So he calls me two weeks later, tells me to send up a tape. I send him a tape. They look at it, calls me back, says, Eddie, they absolutely love you. Send another tape. I uh, send another tape. I do this three or four more times. I'm like, I have no more tape to show. Right. But finally, they came down. Ron Hudson, who recruited in the area, a quarterback coach, checked out the, you know, if I was six three, looked right. at the dimensions, see if I was the right fit. I went up there. Uh, it was the worst visit of my life uh, because it didn't take me out to show you know, all the goods. Right. You know? you know how they match you with personality. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So yeah, think yeah. I was a military guy. I was a military dude. So I sat in their apartment watching movies. Oh, man. At Ohio State. I got 24 hours. I'm like, look, <laughs> show happen, me <laughs> where the women are. <laughs> show me the union. Yeah. I want to see the step show. Right. What? Terrible. So it wasn't until I went into uh, Ohio Stadium uh, before oh, I went to the airport, the, the shoe, and I walk in there and I'm like, ooh. Ooh, you get chills. Ooh, I get chills now. <laughs> I said, mm, this something about this right. feels right. And I just felt it. I, and I started seeing. Started visualizing. You can like, man, I can see yes, my, yeah, I can. yes, yes. I, I said Archie Griffin was playing. Yeah. Keith Byers. Yeah. Chris, Chris Carter. You know, all the greats, the great games. I said, just, just give me an opportunity. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to compete. I don't care who's ahead of me, whether, you know, these guys are going to the NFL. Just let me compete. And uh, Co- Coach Cooper offered me right on the spot. I said, I commit right here and didn't waver. And the, his- the rest is history. I'm looking at your freshman year. Uh, you fumble. You had a problem fumbling onto the football. Oof. You fumbled Oof. twice. I think it was against Michigan. Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. And Illinois. you lose that game because you fumbled twice inside the five-yard line. Yeah. yeah. Your sophomore year, your third string, you barely even play. Yeah. You get back on the field your junior year. 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns, and then your senior year, you go crazy. Yeah. How? What was it like at your lowest point, Oof. your freshman year? Yes. Everybody's boy, they, they they were killing you, Eddie. I ain't gonna lie, they were killing you. Hey, Sharp. <laughs> hey, Danny. Hey, dog. You know, you know how y'all are, right? You, you, you guy mess up, you yeah. gonna start cracking on the butterfingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I was carrying my tray, they holding their hands beneath the tray, like you gonna drop your tray. <laughs> I mean, it was it was bad. Right. And I was, uh, I think in the one publication, they said I was the worst running back to come through Ohio State in wow. the history of Ohio State. Wow. And I didn't know I was going to get out of the doghouse. And I thought about transferring. I really did. Because I had success early. Prior to those two fumbles, I had three touchdowns on national television right. against Syracuse. Right. It was nationally ranked at right. the time. Mm-hmm. And I was the, the goal line specialist. And uh, when that happened... Um, I got shelved for two years, and I went in the tank. I got depressed, discouraged. My mother kept said, hey, see it through. You know, persist without exception. And I never forgot that. And I said, okay, I can leave Ohio State. I can jump in the portal and run from this, 
or I could plant my two feet down and fight it off and, and embrace and, this, embrace it and become better. And that's when I won the Heisman in my freshman, my sophomore year when I made that commitment. So, begin, so I began to work out twice a day. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we had, we used to lift and run. Right. So we would run 400s, 200s, time lapse, all that. I would do that twice. I would study film. I would watch the greats. I remember watching Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, taking pieces of what they do. Emmett with the hands, hat and hands, tight hands, blocking, you know, uh, how he reads the hole, how he read the uh, inside zone, outside zone. What was his footwork on the ISO? You know, all those little minute details so I can create my own style. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I committed to that. And when I got the opportunity, you know, my junior year, my senior year, play with some dogs, you know, right. Orlando Pace and right. Terry Glenn certainly helped. <laughs> yeah. And Ricky Dudley and Titan <laughs> yeah. definitely helped. Right. But um, we committed to that. I committed to excellence in, in, in the rest of history with that. What? So give me your Mount you, you named some of the great running backs. Give me your Mount Rushmore of, of, Ooh, of, 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 of college running backs. A college? Yeah. I'm going to throw a few out there. You got Barry, Bo, Derrick Henry, Earl Campbell, O.J., Tony D., Herschel, Ricky Williams, Ron Dane, Reggie Bush, Marcus Allen. Good Lord. But you got to mention Eric Dickerson. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he did it 19 yeah. with the horseshoe collar was nasty. With that, with that, yes, sir. That neck roll. Oh, man. With the curl. Well, you got to – well, Barry to me, you know – what he did in 11 ball games, this no one has still, they still no, can't no, do it they, they ain't with do that. extra games. They're not going to do that. <laughs> ain't, nobody rush, ain't nobody rushing for 2,600 yards. No. And they so, don't count the bowl game because back right. then the bowl didn't count. He rushed for 205 <laughs> touchdowns in the bowl game. So he got 2,800 yards. Right, right. So that ain't missing. So I'll see Barry Sanders. Oh, man. Uh, Bo Jack was nasty. Um, oof, let me think here. Uh, I'm going to say Derrick Henry. Uh, Marcus was awesome. God, Marcus was great. Um, <laughs> First Herschel, was 2000. Herschel, I know. Hurts. But Marshall Falk. I mean, yeah. Marshall should have won the Heisman. Grand Marshall, San Diego State. He was special. That all black. Oh, yeah, he was special. Talk about the rivalry. Michigan, Ohio State. Mm -hmm. What makes it special? And did you know, did you feel, I mean, without even playing in it, did you know what it meant? Do you know what it represented? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, again, I studied college football growing up. I, I knew about that rivalry. Everybody, that's the greatest rivalry in all of sports. You can say Yankees and Red Sox. You can say, you know. Uh, Duke, North Carolina basketball. Duke, North, yeah, right. That's Alabama, Auburn, mm -hmm. USC, UCLA. Um, but that one there, completely different ball game. You know, Bo and Woody. And, 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 and even it goes back to how the business schools were all set up, you know. Uh, in the, so that's, that is a, a vicious rivalry. And that was probably outside of the Baltimore games that we had. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I was there. about to ask you. Oh, no question. Michigan, Ohio State, or Baltimore, Tennessee? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Dan Burns was just talking about this the other day. <laughs> yes, yesterday. Yeah. He said, from his perspective, that was the baddest defense ever. And I yeah. said, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they were nasty. They four was three. Y'all ran a four three cover two beat it. They beat it. And they had a young Ray Lewis coming down here. Yeah, man. Hey, what you say? Y'all said, listen, Marvin said, how many points y'all? Yeah. Hey, ask Marvin. Said, how many? Six, six, six points? A field yeah. goal or two? Yeah. He said, give us, <laughs> today, he's like, give us 10. I'm like, Marvin, 10? Oh, give us seven. I'm like... But you know they legislated that brand of football out. You can't play. You can't be that physical anymore. Because oh they, I mean, they literally went no. into the ball game trying to knock the corner. They're gonna knock it out. Somebody, somebody leaving. Somebody leaving. That's They're gonna be mine. eleven start, but eleven ain't finished. That finish same finish eleven night will finish. It, that, it was bully ball at its finest. <laughs> it you know? was. And you know what, man? Um, I, I hated y'all. I, I especially hated you because you caught that wheel route. Yeah. And I said, what? The, they can't score. Y'all had 112 yeah. yards of offense yeah. and won the game. Won the game. And I won the game. It was outstanding. It, were, it really was. It was Discipline. Uh, there was not one weak link on it from corner to corner. Yeah. You know you can find one right. somebody. There was nobody. There was nobody. And that's and that's what, you know, with those wars that we had, you know, brought something out of me. Because the week of, you know, playing Baltimore, it's like, all right, listen, nobody's coming to town. Right. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother me this week. 
because there's a spiritual preparation that you got to get ready for. Yeah, you got to get right mentally. And spiritually because <laughs> the moment that you that you shudder or or wink or or have a, a shadow of a doubt, you're done. Yeah. You're done. Right. It, it was it was grown men on that field. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was nothing to play with. Right. And uh, it, it 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 really forced me to raise my level of play every time I face ball. I think it also helped that the two head coaches didn't like each other. Oh yeah, Jeff, and Bra- <laughs> oh, Jeff Fish man. and Brian Billick did not like each other, yeah. and so they spent time taking shots at each other from a distance <laughs> right, in the paper. Right, right, so right. you know, hey, this Brian is Adam Fuel the fire. He, he's reading what what Jeff said, and I'm sure Jeff was reading. Oh what, yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's blood like. pressure going up on a Wednesday like. <laughs> All right, yeah, if we can if we can get it on today, it was it was like that. But you know those rivalries, man. I I'm I'm so honored that I was able to play in it and be a central figure in that. You know, at Michigan, when I played at Ohio State, we beat Michigan one time. That's the time that they owned us. Right. We couldn't we couldn't figure out a way to beat them. We beat oh, them that that was when you had that monster game. But I think Bianca Matuka oh. went for like three hundred three three ten three fifty three thirteen. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. All we then and they lost to Purdue the week before. before. We didn't even watch that film. So we didn't know who we were going to see. They came out there, you know, against us, catch one hand catches, laying out, <laughs> extra effort. You know, Bianca Matuka went off. You we, went got crazy. Him, we got him, you know, he got drafted that day, had uh top ten right. you know, <laughs> against us. But that's how that's what that game, that's what that rivalry's about. You did you play it? I think Oh yeah, Omega Sci Fi. Yes. So sir. What what made you, because they always tried to get me to, to play it, uh-huh. and, I, and I couldn't do it because I like, you know, I had me a nice ride. I had nice clothes. You know, I had a brother to leave. No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, couldn't yeah. let nobody wear my clothes. I won't be the only one wearing I'm, 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 I'm just, you know what? I'm curious. You know what? I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I'll let you ask the question. I, you have Kappa, Kappa, I, Kappa tendencies, mm-hmm. but you're a dog. Yeah. Omega side. I, I definitely would have been properly. No gold. question. I'd have been properly. No gold. question <laughs> without you definitely stand on the shit. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So um my um my sophomore year, I was going I was going in the process. Okay. And um for some strange reason, you know, the process never happened. Okay. Uh and once I my my playing career took off my junior year, I said, I don't have time. Right. For that, right. I, I got to go get this paper. I right. got to go take care of my family. I got right. dreams to, right. to try to go get. Uh, but I always had in the back of my mind, if there if there were ever a time for me to go back and do it, right. I was going to do it. So um, COVID was that time. Right. And you know what? I said, you know what? Hey, it's, it's great. And the brotherhood is good. Yeah. It's a great friendship. Um, the network is vast. Right. Deep. Um, you talk about um, the Jordan is Omega Sci-Fi. Shaq is yes, Omega yes. Sci-Fi. And, and, and being on the HBCU campus. Yeah, man, it's different. It's a the different, pageantry. A pa- the step it's, different. Oh, it's different. It's man. a different, yeah, it's man. different, dog. <laughs> it's different, it's different. I if, know, I, if my knees wasn't so bad, I was hopping <laughs> right now, dog. I promise you. I know, look, I know Ohio <laughs> State with the band, they dot the I, but there's something about that pageantry at the yes. games, that band, them fans dancing yes. nonstop, yes. and the, the, the major reps, them dr- they coming yes. down, and man. It's a different animal, it man. Is. It know, is. Our homecoming game was what, uh, uh, about 19,000. We played Jackson State and Memphis. It was 50,000 fans, wow. man. And a great game against Prime. And, but again, to hear the, their band and our band going at it, it, that's what it's about. Well, the band's man. not supposed to play while the other team got the ball, but, but they don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you play, they play while you got the ball. Yeah. I'm gonna play too. Yeah, right, <laughs> loud too, <laughs> loud, yeah, nonstop. That, but that's that's HBCU football. Right. That's the love. What you start out in Houston, and then I uh, think uh, Houston, you're 95, 96, 97, mm-hmm. and I think 98 is when y'all moved to Nashville. We moved in 97. 97, that's okay, my rookie year, right. So we moved to 97, played in Memphis. Right. Yeah. But still lived played, in Nashville, right. which was crazy. Right. So every day, every game was like an away game. Right. Then we played in Vanderbilt. Right. Uh, 98. Because we came to y'all the preseason. Yeah. Yeah. It was hot that day. Yeah. Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was very hot. You remember oh, that, that heat, right? Yeah, yeah I, do. I do. I do. I do remember the heat. I see that. When I saw the, uh, the, 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 the waves. waves, I said, them boys hot. <laughs> so, yeah, it was... Uh, we played there, and uh, we had subpar seasons. Right. We didn't have the fanfare. Right. 
we couldn't give away a ticket for right. those games. Mm -hmm. People walk by Vanderbilt on a Sunday thinking there's a church revival going right. over there. They couldn't, it was like, who's here? Right. And, but it wasn't until you know, 2000 when we changed the name, the colors, sold out every PSL right. and, and just took off from there, man. We, we really appreciated having that because it finally felt like we were playing in the NFL. Prior to that, we were nomads. Right. You know. You, you realize that when you're a first-round draft pick, there's expectation. Mm -hmm. But when you win the Heisman Trophy as a running back, the expectation is greatly increased. So they expect you to come in and do exactly what you did the season oh, yeah. that you won the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, they're like, well, what's, I mean, what? I mean, how hard is it? Right. My, my thing was, no, I'm, I'm here to dominate, man. I'm here to make my mark uh, on, 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 on the NFL. Right. Whatever capacity that is. And that was my mindset. It right. wasn't, I, I put all the distractions aside. I got me a nice little apartment on Holly Hall. Right. Which is awesome. Houston, by the way. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to H-Town. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Woo. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Woo. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I got an apartment, you know, was locked in on my craft, and Ronnie Harmon was on our team. Okay. And he took me under his wing and showed me how to be a professional. Okay. How to prepare, taking notes looking how to run routes, you know, all the little minute things slowing down, you know, um, on my steps to, to approach the hole a certain way. Right. Mel Gray, same thing, mm -hmm. told me about stocks and bonds, you know, things to read, how to read the stock market. So getting around those guys early on left an indelible mark on me in terms right. of how to be a professional and wanting to do more. Right. You know, shit, I watched you work, right. you know, at Denver. Mm -hmm. You know, your work ethic. I mean, I, str I wanted to be talked about among the greats. Right. That was my goal when that, right. I wanted to start off fast. And you did, I mean, you did. I mean, you rushed for 10,000 yards in your career, never missed a start, joining Jim Brown and Walter Payton as the only starting consecutive regular season game. You had 130, 130 consecutive starts. Rushed for 1,000 yards all but one season. Mm -hmm. um, when it was time to leave Tennessee, mm. how difficult of a decision was that? It was very difficult. Um, it happened faster than I thought. Um, you know, I signed a big deal two or three years prior to that. Right. Hurt my toe. Um, still played in the games. We still had a small window with that particular team to win. Right. And I didn't want to miss that. You know, I, I wanted to be a part of that. Those were my boys. Um, so it, was, it came down to, I think, $500,000. And that $500,000 was symbolic to say, okay, I'm willing to take a pay cut, but right. don't, don't be disrespectful. I mean, right. That's, I, I want to stay. Don't, you, you, if, I, if I take it down to a certain level, now you can get rid of me. Right. I, I mean, that's, just, that's business. So um, we never saw eye to eye on that. I left and went to Dallas. Who did you blame that on? I know one. That was my decision. That was strictly my decision. But you felt it was disrespectful because they had already asked you to take a pay cut and you said yes, and then they wanted to give you a, a, a shave your hair. You know what? I, I think it was, was the organization. It was Bud Adams, it was right. Floyd Reese, it was right. Jeff Fisher. I mean, I get the business side and how they've done players in the past, you know, Steve and me. And right. it, was, it, it, was, it wasn't with dignity. Because my vision was, damn, you know, how I was going to leave the game was at a press conference. Right. You know, with my boys in the crowd and cameras popping, right. whatever that is, and and go out on my own terms. But it didn't happen that way. Right. So watching them when I was in the Dallas Cowboy uniform, watching the team that I helped build, you know, was painful. And it was hard for me to love the game the same way. I saw the business side of 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 the game and I could not adjust to it because I did not play for that. I did not play for money. I played for the camaraderie, the love. That's what you, you miss the most. Saying? That's what I miss the most. You mentioned Steve <clears throat> and you guys had a great relationship and unfortunately he died tragically in a murder suicide. How did that impact you? Because I know you guys were so close. Yeah. Um it's not there's not a day I don't think about him. You know what I'm saying? Um I dream about him a lot actually. Wow. And in the dream is like, we're out at the practice field. I can hear his laugh. So he has a distinct laugh. And he's laughing and he's joking with me. And I, and I say to him, man, see, you're not dead. And I wake up. 
And I'm like, damn, you know, he's physically gone. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a way, it was his way of telling me that I'm not. Right. I'm on the other side. It's a different phase of life, but I'm not. Um, watching him uh, become, you know, uh, the player that he became to be yeah. was awesome. Alcorn to MVP, leading the team to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but in his dark moments, though, Shannon, like, it was some tough times when yeah. the fans booed him. Yes. When he couldn't throw a five yard out with confidence. When he wasn't Air McNair, you know, he was a manager and he, and he was selfless in the point where he didn't say much. He knew his role, but once he committed to his craft and dedicated to being um, uh, uh, the quarterback that he wanted to be, he was awesome. And I watched him go from, you know, not being able to throw a five yard out to being masterful, calling plays within the play you know, on the football field, on five wides and checking the plays, you know, manipulating the defense with his eyes and safety. I mean, all that stuff. It was awesome to watch that. To watch him go from that to MVP was was awesome, man. I read where you say you struggle <clears throat> after leaving the game. Mm -hmm. um, you felt with depression. You felt at one point in time, I think if I'm correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you thought you, you were suicidal at points. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that far. That far. I wouldn't say that. He was majorly depressed. But definitely majorly depressed. And because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what was next, man. Right. I mean, um, I was hoping for another opportunity. Right. And that never came. It never came. And I never had the proper closure. Right. With that. You know what I'm saying? It never, it never had that that goodbye. You was preparing for the opportunity, but not for the opportunity to exit. exit. So you didn't have anything set up like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go right. into business, this, I'm gonna do this, X, Y, Z. Right. I didn't have it tell them none of that. It was none of that okay. there. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It was that wasn't there. So I had to go create it. <laughs> right. And that's when I got into acting. Okay. Okay, because uh, right around that time, I uh, started doing TV and I was getting some opportunities. I, actually, I hear Fox, Fox Studios, right. and I did a couple of auditions. What you do, Best Damn Sports? Best Damn Sports, yo, yeah, John Sally. And the boy. So I did an audition for I think it was I think Ali. It was terrible. Right. Oh man, the, the cast director took off my shirt. And I'm delivering these lines. I'm saying, you know, hey, you can't make me do that. Something stupid. I don't know, <laughs> but it was terrible. I said, okay, you know what? If I'm gonna do acting, I'm gonna go and get acting lessons, I'm gonna learn the craft, I'm gonna appreciate it. And what I found by that, by going through my acting class, work with a young uh, young lady, um, a, a woman by the name of Anna Maria. Okay. Short Italian lady, no longer with us for, for seven years. Mm -hmm. And we would sit in her uh, house and she would make this Italian soup and we would sit there and read uh, pages of, 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 of um, of ads, you know, and, and act it out and reading Shakespeare and reading all of these novels and I'm adding character and learning the, the art of acting, Uta Hagen, reading these all these books. And just to, 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 to be able to write, and I found that it was cathartic for me. Okay. Because all of that, that pain and disappointment and discouragement and depression and frustration, I was able to filter that out through a character and even through my own writing. Mm -hmm. And it was healing. And I was like, oh, wow, this is this is awesome. So then I got on stage, did my first play, failed terribly. <laughs> uh, Broadway. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. normally be like acting. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really know how, I don't know anybody that's ever done it your way. But normally I, I'm thinking of an actor, I'm thinking they're coming to Hollywood. Uh -huh. I'm thinking they want to be on the big screen. Yeah. But you went to Broadway. Why? You know, I watched Denzel. You know, I was studying. Raising the Sun? Oh, I saw him in Raising the Sun, saw him um, in Fences. Yeah. Uh, saw him in a couple different deals. Um, I love Broadway, but um, right around the time I was looking at other actors, they said, well, if you want to act, be an actor, go to theater. You know, if you want to be a movie star, come out to, Ho come out to Hollywood. And I thought about that. I said, well, acting, you know, theater is for the actor because it's, it's in real time. It's like right now. Right. And there's so much, the, the stakes are high and you have to be able to, to be real in imaginary circumstances. Right and to be vulnerable and to really open up and go there. So um, that's what I did. I said, okay, if I'm going to jump on screen, if I'm gonna jump on a stage, I want to be prepared for that. I want to study the art of being an actor, not a movie star. Mm -hmm. 
So that way, hey, if I could jump in front of a camera, we could have this conversation. You know, it makes it's the it's it's the dojo. Okay. I, that's what I call it, the dojo mm -hmm. or the weight room. Right. For getting a camera and so forth, because you're learning how to be truthful and how to deliver lines and um, the the blocking on stage and all of that. So that kind of helped me, you know, and still does to this day uh, for that. Do. What of the adrenaline rush? Mm. You come out in front of 80,000. You come out in the Super Bowl where you got 100 million people walking. And then you're on Broadway where you got two, maybe a couple of hundred people watching. What's the difference? The difference is it's intimate. On the football field, you know, you a few hundred yards away, you can fumble, they boo, you know, you get up, you shake it off. You can impose your will, you know, to get back into it. On stage, if you're out there by yourself, all you can do is save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember I did a play, Guys from Bones, years ago. And um, my lines, it was an ensemble and a lot going on. It was um, Judgment Day was the monologue. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's all the stuff going on. There's African drums going on. There's streamers, sun, moon, all that. And I was supposed to say that God himself stepped down with the sun in his right hand, the moon in his left. The stars clustered above his head and the earth under his feet. And God walked where he trod, hollowed the valleys out and bowls the mountains up. That's what I was supposed to say. Mm -mm. So it was my turn. And much like these lights, the heat of the lights, I could feel the lights, right? I walked down center stage. And it's packed, theater's packed, one night only, see Eddie George, la, 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 right? <laughs> and <clears throat> I can see my, my ex-teammates in the crowd, they uh -oh. like, they ah! like, all right, you want to be Denzel, all right, let's see this, right? I can see the smirk on their faces. I see my, my wife at the time, she's like, oh, shit, he's going he's gonna to crack. <laughs> right? So I said, God himself stepped down, the sun is right hand, the moon is left. The wind is blowing. The grass is green. The animals are in the pasture. And God said, that's good. And I walked off the stage. And no one, that's not what I'm supposed to say. No, 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 right, no, 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 right, no, no. Right, right, That's right. not what you just said. Exactly. <laughs> so I learned how to improvise. Right. The ensemble was like, what did he just do? Right. Okay. And I had to deliver another monologue at the end. And from that point on, I said, I'll never go back on stage again because I was terrible. But I said, you know what? I got to go back and revisit it. I got comfortable and started doing Shakespeare. I did Raising in the Sun, actually. Mm -hmm. I did uh, Top Dog, Underdog a couple years ago. Um, I did uh, The Whipping Man, another, another drama show. So I've done over the years various roles. And Billy Flynn for me on Broadway was just me, you know, going up there and an auditioning and it prepared me for that moment. I said, damn, you know what? I'm gonna be on Broadway. And so is that something you want to continue or do you want to progress your way? Uh, what what is more what do you want to do more? You want to be a coach in a power five in a fail or do you want to come to Hollywood? <laughs> that is an excellent question. I think now is the time um where the entertainment side is going to be a little different. Um you know it may be not in, in front of the camera, I might be producing it. Okay. The experiences that I'm experiencing now as a coach, that's a show. Right. <laughs> you like Oh, that. yeah. No, no. There's a lot of drama in that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking notes and I'm, I'm doing some things that, hey, I'm going to benefit, you know, my acting side will be something I'm going to write in terms of my experience as a coach and my experience jumping into this. It's, it's, it all plays off of one another. Right. So, you know, I, I feel like, hey, you know, if if and when that coaching gig is up, I go to a power five for five years. I say, hey, thank you very much. I'm done. Come out to Hollywood and come drink with you. You know, <laughs> write, write a couple scripts, right. make some movies, win an Oscar, yeah. Emmy, Grammy, Tony. Be the first person to win a He Got. Is, is, is that is that is that where y'all know what a He Got is, right? No, I don't know what it. You know what a He Got is, right? No. An Emmy, Grammy. Grammy. Okay, yeah. I, he got as a Heisman. Right. I mean, yeah, you definitely gonna be the only one to win that one. You, gonna be, you definitely gonna be the only one to win that one. Well, I mean, there have only been a handful of women that's the uh, people that's won an Emmy, yeah. Grammy, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. I think Viola. Vi Vi uh, no, no. Uh, I think Viola might. Rita Viola, Moreno. Whoopi, Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Um, I know Common is close. Yeah. I think he has to do a uh, uh, a Tony. Yeah. And he was on Broadway right. doing the show um, yeah. this past year. Yeah. When I. Let's go back. I want to go back to the Super Bowl because that was, I mean, in Atlanta. 
and you're so close. So, 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 yeah. so close. You are a yard away. And when you're so young like you guys were, you just like, us oh, a foregone conclusion. We'll be back next year or the year after. But I mean, and you never really got back again. And what, what do you remember about that moment? Um, I remember as we were driving down to go score. Right. The final drive. And Steve, Steve did his thing. He uh, pushed down Kevin Carter through that strike, I believe, to Kevin Dyson. Mm-hmm. Pick up the first down and call a timeout, and I'm dead tired. I'm like, shh, because we didn't have that week off. Right. We yeah, had, you went we straight went from the championship game to the right Super Bowl. Right there, and we was, we were all out there dead. Right. And I said, this is why I ran all those hundreds. This is why I trained the way I do for this moment right here. And you couldn't tell me that we were not going to score going to overtime and find a way to win this ball game. Right. And uh, when Dyson stretches out, try to get that ball over the goal line, Immediately, confetti is on in the air, and it's purple. Is uh, what gold and blue, blue and gold, and the stage comes out, and I'm standing there like, damn, like it's really over. Shit, like damn, like ah, nah, I can't. It's got, it's got to be more time. It's right. got to be more time. And I just walked over to the sideline. I sat there and I just watched it, man. I didn't want to leave the field. Right. There was still more out there. Right. And I said, all right, you know what? We're supposed to go to the Pro Bowl the following day. Right. I told Jeff Fisher, I said, you know what, man? I don't think I'm gonna go. I, I think I'm gonna take a couple of days off and I'm on that hill tomorrow. Right. We start working. I got I got I got to get back there. Because you you you've been there. You 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 know what it's like. Mm-hmm. You've been on the winning side of right. that. So I said, I, I've got to see that confetti in the sky. And dedicated that whole year to training to put my best year together to get us back. And of course, y'all ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> uh but um you know, I think about that now as a coach, like maybe God has brought me back into the game in this capacity. Mm-hmm. So I may not physically cross that goal line, but these young men will. Right. Maybe it's a championship. Maybe it's the goal line of of their of realizing who they are, their potential, getting that great education, right. changing their lives, saving their lives, whatever that is. And that's the gratification I can get. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's that's kind of how I see this opportunity because I didn't ask for it. Right. I wasn't searching for it. Right. But when I ser- searched my heart in the moment and really meditated on that for months, it, it felt like this was the move I had to make. Right. Do you think the running back has lost value? Yes. And it's unfortunate. But in order to win a championship, you need a running game. How now? Isn't that ironic? You know, everybody talks about, oh, you can just put anybody in the, at the running back position. Oh, really? Ask Josh Allen that at, at Buffalo. Right. Yeah, we, we see what, the, what that looked like. You know, the teams that are now in has some, some sort of running right. back. Um, I think the days of the one running back that can do everything is done. Right. Derrick Henry is that last one right. that can tote it in 30 in, 30 out, and still be dominant. Right. Um, but it's very hit or miss with the rest of these guys. One day the hot, next day the cold. It's not right. consistent. And I don't, I don't think, I think the game has changed. Right. Um, now the more college RPO league. is quarterback centric. You know, the quarterback's doing everything. So yeah, toward the end of my career, there was more, you know, two, a two running back system. Now we're seeing three and four running back and specialist. Right. You know, guys that can run routes, guys that can run the outside zone, another one that can run the inside zone, one that can run pin pool, another one that can run fly sweep. Right. I mean, there's not that one guy that can do it all. And I think that's that's a travesty because there was a point in time when the running back was revered. Right. You know, much like a quarterback. Right. You know, you had TD. Right. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. And without TD, I don't think no, y'all no win. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't, ain't don't no win championship, championship game, right? Ain't no championship happen. Do you think we'll ever see another running back win the MVP? I think it'll ha- it can happen again. Once you know he doesn't probably be it. he'll have to break the record to do it. It would have to be because the quarterbacks are throwing for five thousand and forty touchdowns every year. So, right. so he's gonna have to be somebody it, have to it run would have to, yards. It have to be twenty co- or close to it. Yes, I mean we we seen uh, Justin Jefferson almost get two thousand. Yeah. and he may not win it. No, he's not going. So win. it's it's, a, it's definitely a quarterback award at this point. I'm looking at so who would you say is the best running back in Titans? It's, it's kind of like Oilers Titans. Because they kind of like we'll say we'll, we'll mix it all together. So um, you got you, mm-hmm. Chris jo- Chris Johnson, yeah. D. Henry, yeah. Earl Campbell. For me, 
This is just me personally speaking. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take me out of the equation. Okay. I'm always gonna say me. Right. But Earl Campbell, EC, was special. All right. I mean, he he can do it all. He can yeah. do what Chris Johnson did and Derrick Henry did, and then some. Or right, he he would obliterate linebackers. Oh yeah, he run he run he ran. Um, so I, I'm gonna say EC. But damn, Derrick, man, he's so special. Like. He had, I think he didn't get hurt two years ago. I think he breaks the record. Oh, without a doubt. He, I mean, he, I, he had 900 yards eight games in. Yeah. And he was on pace to yeah. this yeah, Saturday. Go 20, yeah, he will go Yeah, And he's going to do it because yeah. he was durable. Right. Um, But but Chris Johnson, God, man. He was, That's me was crazy. He's the, outside of Barry Sanders, the greatest home run hitter in the NFL, period. Speed was ridiculous. He, yeah, he, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. With... Let's go back to that that one matchup because that's the matchup, and we had some great battles. We played you guys. People don't realize this that what you and I we used to be in the same division. Um, it was the Ravens, the, uh, twice uh, a year. Twice a year. It was us, Pittsburgh, uh, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Jacksonville, uh, in Jacksonville. Yeah, in the same division. But everybody wants to talk about that divisional game, mm-hmm. in which we came there. You guys were you guys were the uh, uh, number one seed in the division. We had beat you guys in, in – we were the first team to beat you at – In, in Adelphia. At the Adelphia. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We were the time. first team. And so we felt very confident going back. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about that game? Everything. I remember everything. I remember um, something that came out in the article about me laying down, me being scared of Ray. Right, yeah. And that rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> that, that rubbed me the wrong way. I was okay. quiet the entire, entire week. Okay. And I said, okay. And I knew, and I think everybody knew, whoever won that game was going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Nobody was going. We, I, I think we might have had the best scoring defense. Yeah. Number one, y'all were number two. We had the best scoring defense. Y'all had the best total defense. Total defense. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. Yes. So, I just remember going into that game. You know how typically you come out during warm-ups. You yeah. say, hey, dog, how you doing? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Get a pound. None of that. None of that. Tone was set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tone was set. Yeah. It was going to be a war. And I, I I just remember it was just back and forth, and it was bloody. It was nasty. It was painful. Uh, you scored. We wanted, We scored. And it was nipping. It was, the team that made that mistake was going to lose. Right. We, we kicked, tried to kick a field goal, got blocked, Locked, went yeah. back, took all the wind out of our sails yes. because – to, to drive on that defense, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. It was it was it, difficult. It was not going to happen. Now 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 that y'all were like a python. Yeah. Once you got the bite, rap was done. It was done. Only a matter of time. Yeah. And and yeah. without a without a scooping score or pick six. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about that defense, I mean, they were creating turnovers. Yeah. Rip, pull, hammer. All, Sarah Goose is big behind. Yeah. Hit the quarterback Double. without the ball. <laughs> you know, where's the flag? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So, I'm looking yeah. at you, what you've done since you retired from the NFL. You got a bachelor's degree in landscape architect from Ohio State, earned an MBA from Northwestern, appeared on Broadway, owns a restaurant, Eddie George Bar and Grill 27, owns a landscaping company and a wealth management firm, taught classes at, at Ohio State Fisher College of Business. Why do so much? Did you feel like your life wasn't fulfilled? Did you feel like you had not checked enough boxes? No, I had nothing to do with checking boxes. Um, landscape architecture, that was my major in school. Okay. And I was going to get my degree. Okay. And I was challenged by the fact that somebody said, hey, you're not going to do nothing with it. I said, why well, should build a business? And I started my own landscape architecture firm in 2003. Okay. And I wanted to grow that business. Uh, so I went through some hiccups didn't quite understand the nomenclature associated with business right. and reading spreadsheets and this and that. So I said, okay, let me go get my master's in business to understand. So I can understand. understand. Why, I'm not gonna allow somebody to tell me anymore or, or, or um, uh, what's the, what am I looking for? Um, to sit over my shoulder yeah. and explain to me what's going right. on. I wanna look at the numbers and know what I'm looking at I wanna... and articulate that right. in, a, in an educated way. So I went, I decided to get my master's in business. And while I was there, I figured that, hey, I probably can't grow my landscape architecture business to a billion dollar business. Right. So I got out of that. And then I said, okay, what can I do that I can, you know, have 
flexible time. Mm -hmm. You you use my network of people that I know. Uh, build a business that's going to have a recurring revenue model. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm passionate about helping others. Right. And it was wealth management. I said there was a situation that happened to me early in my career where um, a financial advisor almost stole all my money. Right. Um, and I said, well, I can help young athletes with financial literacy and give them a plan of success, right. financially speaking. So I got my Series 7, my 66 license about uh, right around the same time I was studying to be <laughs> going, going to Chicago. Right. So I had this idea that I was going to work with my three E's. And my three E's are entertainment, entrepreneurship, and education. Okay. And to teach. So that's what I was operating in, was to act and tell stories, uh, build my business, mm -hmm. and then to teach this to young people so they can be set up for success, financially speaking. That's when I was teaching at Ohio State. Has the NFL uh, invited you in to speak at the Rookie Symposium? I have. Um, over the years, I have. And mm -hmm. I talked about various things. I talked about my transition, um, leaving the game. Uh, matter of fact, when they had it at Cleveland, um, mm -hmm. at that, uh, that, that spa up there, I can't think of the name, but um, I'm going there. And it, what's crazy is everything that I've done up until this point has prepared me to become a head coach. Right. You know, as an actor, the ability to listen, listening actively is what you do as an actor and then you respond. So to listen to these kids, to truly listen to them and what their issues are and to uh, figure out what they really want and how to get them to from point A to point B, you have to listen. You have to listen to what others are saying about the university itself to figure out where the problems right. are. So that was one. And then the, the, the ability to teach, teach life, to teach life lessons, to teach um, whatever that is in the moment and to be organic um, as a teacher has, has helped me. So all of that preparation and what I've done over the years wasn't about checking boxes. It was preparing me. Right. You know, for what I'm doing now. I thought you were on a path to be the next rock. <laughs> Athlete turned actor. Why why did why don't you did you not devote the time? Because a lot I mean a lot of opportunity getting an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Was it the opportunity? Was it the time? What what transpired that all of a sudden you you because it seemed like you were in a lot of movies. I'm looking here, you're the best man holiday with Tay Diggs, mm -hmm. Neil Long, Sanon Latham, Regina Hall, Moore, Chestnut, Game Plans, starring Rock. You were you were in some movies. And yeah. you know. I'm taking a hiatus. You taking a hiatus? <laughs> yeah. You gonna get back in it. But you yeah. said, but you it might not be in front of the camera, it might, it might be, be behind the camera. I'd be behind as a production company. Right. And producing stories. Right. You know, again, my son's at USC Film School. Right. And I can get I can always jump into his movies. You like do yeah. do you like telling stories? I do. I really do. Um, this the art of telling it and to get the point across. You as a storyteller, you're trying to do something to the character that you're playing across from. Right. You're trying to do something to invoke an emotion into the audience. You're trying to get a message across, whatever right. that may be. So that that um the ability to do that. I think is very powerful right. in terms of telling a story and getting to, to influence people to do right. something, to, to call a, a right. call of action. Right. Yeah. You're married. You've been married a long time. Yes, sir. Married to Taj, former member of SWV. How have you ever, how have you been able to keep, she's a public figure, you're a public mm -hmm. figure, obviously. How have you been able to keep your marriage so private? Whew. Oh, I didn't think it was private. <laughs> um, Keep people like your business. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I try to keep my my name out the streets. Right. You know, and lo and behold, I haven't been very good at that at times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can I can admit that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm no angel. Right. And she knows that. Right. Um, we've had our wars, we've had our moments, but right. that's what marriage is. And we, I've learned to grow through that. I mean, she's she is a woman of grace and compassion. Right. And forgiveness and and I appreciate that. Right. And she has my back, mm -hmm. you know. And I've learned over the years as I've evolved and have grown that um, in order for me to be reach my full potential, I've got to be a hundred, you know, with her at all right. times. Right. And and that's and that's what makes it work is communication. Right. For for us and just being very honest right. with one another and where we are. And I think that's helped us go from one stage to the next stage. So give me some of your keys. What's some of your biggest keys 
getting married and staying married? Uh, getting married, um, it's understanding. Is it their right time to get married? No. <laughs> I mean, you can always say, yeah, you know, um, 35 and a half, <laughs> no, 40. No, I, you're never ready. Right. I think it's a commitment. <clears throat> and I'll say this, um, there's no formula. You can read all the books you want. Right. Each person is uniquely different. Yes. So you have to take the time to get to know that person, the time to uh, will, be willing to go through all the highs and lows. And love is an action word. Right. You have to choose to love. That's not a noun. It's an action. So you have to wake up saying, hey, I'm going to love my wife today. That means I'm going to make the right decisions. That means whatever <laughs> she says you do, right. you're going to do, is say yes. Right. If she says, hey, baby, do I look good in this dress and she's bloated? You say, yes, yes. baby, you look good. <laughs> that's what, that's what I've learned. So, you know, it's, um, it's all of that. Right. And, uh, but she's my best friend. Right. We still laugh together. Right. We, I, make, I make it a, a point to prioritize my time for her. Now, all that I'm doing, I do this every single Sunday. I didn't do it this week because I've been out here doing my thing. But I listen to uh, a sermon mm -hmm. at night or a game might be on. And I plan out my entire week. And I start with me first. And I always start with my private time in the morning, my meditation. Then I'll go into my, my workout. I'll, I'll swim, I'll lift weights, whatever that requires me to do that week, yoga, whatever. And then I go down to the next phase of my life that's being a, a husband and father, date night. I schedule that in, mm -hmm. I plan it in that time. So I am intentional about the time that I spend my, with my wife, whether it's 15 minutes, an hour, four days. We may plan a trip three or four months down the line, but I try to create those moments with her because she's busy. She's still traveling. She's still singing, right. still doing her thing. She's doing a reality show now in Atlanta. She was down. So we have to be intentional right. about how we're spending our time together. Right. I read somewhere it says that when you get married or married, the man must date his wife every single day. Yes, every day. You gotta have patience, <laughs> and it's it's it is it is work. Yes, it it is work. So it's work. So it's it is anything worthwhile is uphill. Right. You know what I'm saying. I always say that, and I always believe that. And um, it has its ups and downs. It can get monotonous. You got to do things to keep it fresh. Right. You know what I'm saying. It's like, okay, you want to be a redhead or a blonde tonight? Right. You know. What I'm <laughs> <saying>? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Nah, hey, hey nah, no. that ain't nothing to do with you. That's him talking. You know, That's him talking. You know, you know. So fitness. Yeah. At, you're almost fifty, and you, you're still in great shape. That's something that you little. Hey, you listen. I'm, you are the <laughs> dog. You are the. You are killing it, man. The fashion game. You Thank look you. great, man. I saw you. your, your your Twitter or your, your Instagram. You still throwing up iron yeah, without yeah. a spotter. <laughs> 4.15. And you you DM and say, bro, get a spot. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You DM and say, bro, get a spot. I said, listen, I got to find out who your stylist is, though, dog. I'm like, yo, Shannon. Yeah, you got to be looking right. You got to be looking right. You know. And that sweater you wore tonight, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah, got yeah. a lot of man, love on that. Man, sweater was trending, man. That sweater got me in trouble, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you, so what, what are your fitness routine? What, what do you eat? I mean, obviously, we can't eat like we ate when we played because yeah. we don't work out like we worked out when we play. Right. Yeah, and I can't I can't run like I used to. Right. So my knee is an issue, so I swim. Okay. I try to swim twice a week. Okay. Um, my goal um, has been, you know, try to get at least a mile in of that breaststroke, yeah. uh, backstroke. Right. Uh, I'm doing the, um, a dolphin kick right. as well. So, so that, getting that cardiovascular in for me is good. And now that we have a weight room at Tennessee State, right. I get my weight coach and we, we plan, uh, you know, conditioning day, right. weight day. So I try to hit the iron. I just got my shoulder done. So okay. I'm trying to get back into um, build my shoulder back up. Right. So I do that, uh, try to lift at least four days a week. My rest day consists of yoga, stretching, and a massage. Right. So my eating is sporadic. So right. I still try to plan, right. eat every three hours. Yeah, them coaches. Coaches don't have, they have, don't have a, a, oh, a regular God. schedule, so you eat at odd times. It, it, is, it is frustrating because, you know, I don't want to eat the Oreos, but, you know, I'm starving. They got to eat them more. Yeah, you got to eat them. <laughs> they got to get, they got, they got to get down. Yeah. Well, Eddie, I appreciate it. I appreciate Man. you stopping by the club. Oh. Having a conversation. Best of luck this year. Yes, sir. And everything you do moving forward, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Eddie George, ladies and gentlemen. All my life.
grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life I've been grinding all my life.